Hey everyone, my name is Ryan H. Lewis, and the JavaScript world never slows down, does it? What I bring to you today is the newest version of the ECMAScript specification, which is basically the new things that are going to be in the JavaScript language. This in particular is called ES2017. You can also call it ES8, but the ECMAScript committee is trying to get away from the number versions and try to focus on the years that they come out. ES2017 is a host of new features that are gonna be added to the JavaScript language. Some of them may be new to you, but some of them may not be. The main reason that some of these aren't new is that each one of these new features is introduced and finalized in the specification as a proposal. And these proposals have been finalized over the past year. Browser vendors start implementing these new features as soon as proposals are finalized. So some of these features are already in browsers, they're in the node environment, and you can use them today. Because of that, I'll actually be able to show you some live examples, which is pretty cool. So let's get started with the new features of ES2017. The first is the addition of two new functions on the object object, called object values and object entries. These are similar to object.keys, and they basically return an array of the values from an object in object.values and the key value pairs in object.entries. Usage is fairly simple. You first call the function object.values and then pass in an object as the argument. On execution, you'll see that it pulls the values out of the object and returns them as an array. You can do the same thing with entries. and you get an array with each key value pair in its own array. The next new feature in ES2017 is string padding. And I have a sneaking suspicion that the left pad incident from last year might be slightly responsible for the inclusion of this feature. I'm not gonna rehash what happened with left pad, but when everything happened, it was apparent that a lot of projects relied on the functionality that left pad provided, which in a lot of languages is provided by the language itself. This new string padding feature basically enhances JavaScript strings, so you don't need to use a package like leftpad when trying to do things like adding padding to your string. It adds the inclusion of the pad start and pad end function to the string literal in JavaScript. The arguments are max length, which is the maximum length that that string can have, and then whatever value you want to pad that string with. So let's say I have a string like word, I can call pad start on it with a maximum link of 10 and a space as the pad. And you'll see that it is added a bunch of spaces before the string that I called pad start on. A more likely example is when you're formatting times, you can use the same code when you have the number 12, and if you have the number nine. So you don't have to do the weird little, if it's less than 10, add a zero. If it's more than 10, leave it alone logic. The next one is a little bit weird, and that's the addition of the get own property descriptors function on the object. Get own property descriptors returns each one of the properties on an object with the descriptors included. A descriptor, if you're not too familiar with it, is basically meta information that's added to a property that defines how that property can be used. Let's see what this looks like. Let's say I have my object X with two properties. I can call the get own property descriptors function on object. Passing in the object I want to get the property descriptors from. And I get back an object with each property as the key and then the descriptors as the values. This function really gives you a way to get all this descriptor information for an object in a very simple way. This next feature actually kind of surprised me because I didn't realize this was such a desired functionality. And this new feature allows trailing commas in function arguments, whether you're declaring a function or you're calling a function. In pre ES 2017, if you called console log with a string and then a trailing comma, you would get a syntax error. Since I'm running a node version where this has already been implemented, adding that trailing comma afterward is valid syntax. You may wonder why this matters, who would need it. And 
it seems like the major use case is when you're separating function arguments into separate lines. You may have your word and another word. And it's common in projects to allow a trailing comma to exist with each one of these arguments so that the next developer along the line doesn't have to deal with the comma. They can just add another property like this. You can already do this type of thing in objects where a trailing comma is valid. So adding this to functions in some ways just standardizes the way that commas are used in JavaScript. This next new feature will probably not be new to you. And it's the addition of async functions, also sometimes called async await. This is another one of those features that has been finalized for a while and is already in use in some browsers and the Node platform. And basically it just introduces a new way to do asynchronous programming in JavaScript following on the heels of promises which were released in ES 2015. Because giving a good example of async functions results in quite a bit of code, and because there are already a lot of great articles and tutorials out there on how async await works. I'm not going to provide an example here, so feel free to just Google async await and you'll find plenty of resources to get more information on this. And here we are with the last feature, which adds some new JavaScript globals that are useful in concurrent programming. This new feature is summarized as shared memory and atomics. And the first global that it adds is a shared array buffer. This is primarily to be used with web workers that are executing in the same space. You may want them to be able to communicate to each other over a type of memory instead of using the typical message queue that they use today. The shared array buffer is basically a global that you can create a new section of memory and you can pass that into web workers so they can use that same memory space. The other new global is the Atomics Utility Library. And this essentially allows you to do normal operations like assignment and retrieval in an atomic manner. What that means in JavaScript is that when you do getting and setting in your JavaScript, the compiler may make changes to that code in order to optimize it. If you're expecting a very specific order of operations, you can sometimes be surprised by odd behavior as the compiler moves your code around. Atomics disable this functionality and create a static order for the code that you want to run. Basically, if you have an atomics.get, Anything before it will happen before it, and anything after it will happen after it. And using this Atomics Utility Library, you can be sure that the compiler will respect that order of operations. Neither one of these features have been implemented by any browsers yet, so I can't give you a good example. And I'm thinking that even if they were implemented, the example would be very convoluted, especially since I don't do that much with web workers anyways these days. And there you have it, the new features that have been released in the ECMAScript 2017 specification. As with any new feature to the JavaScript language, browser support is all over the place. I noticed that Chrome and Firefox had already implemented a lot of the features, so definitely check out the MDN docs before you start using these. However, most of these are supported in current versions of Node, so that may be the best environment to try these things out. Did you have a favorite feature that I mentioned or have you already been using some of these in production and finding some cool uses? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. And make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos on JavaScript, Node, AWS, serverless, and any other Node module I've installed today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.